Good morning, my name is Isabel Casasus, and today I would like to talk to you on behalf of my colleagues Bertolín, Orquera, Ferrer and Blanco about an experiment we conducted in the Agri-Food Research and Technology Center of Aragon, CITA, in Spain. As part of an EU project, Gentor, devoted to the study of the components of efficiency and resilience in dairy and beef cattle, here we analyzed the milk fatty acid profile of beef cows in response to a short feed restriction during lactation. Dairy cows normally undergo a negative energy balance at the start of lactation. The homeoretic adaptation mechanisms to face this challenge are quite well studied. They involve endocrine and metabolic adaptations in order to mobilize body reserves towards the prioritary function of milk production. As a consequence, their milk fatty acid profile reflects this mobilization of fat reserves with an increment in long chain preformed fatty acids, while there's a reduced concentration of the short chain fatty acids that are synthesized de novo in the mammary gland. In beef cows, however, this has seldom been studied. Therefore, the objective of our experiment was to determine how the milk fatty acid profile of beef cows responds to a short but intense nutrient restriction during lactation. In order to do so, we used 16 adult Parta de Montaña suckler beef cows, which were suckled by their calves twice daily during four months. During lactation, the cows were fed a diet based on hay and concentrate that met 100% of their daily energy requirements. But at two months post calving, we applied a four day energy restriction in which the diet only met 55% of their energy requirements. Therefore, for this study, we consider three different phases. The basal phase, when they were fed a 100% diet. The challenge phase, starting on day zero, when a feed restriction uh, was applied. And then the refeeding phase, when cows, they were back on a 100% diet. On the days described in the table in each phase, we took milk samples by hand milking the cows after the suck their calves had suckled them. Fatty acids of milk were converted to methyl esters and then were identified by grass chromatography. Then we performed some, cal some calculations of sums of fatty acids. First, according to the number and position of double bones, we considered the sum of saturated, monounsaturated, polyunsaturated fatty acids and the sums of cis and trans -mufas. Then according to chain lengths, we divided them into C4 to C15 or the de novo synthesis fatty acids, which are synthesized in the mammary gland, and C16 to C24, which are the mobilization fatty acids performed that come from the mobilization of body fat reserves. These sums, together with the four major fatty acids, which were here palmitic, oleic, stearic, and myristic, were statistically analyzed with mixed models, where they was considered a fixed effect and cow a random effect. When we analyzed the major individual fatty acids, we found an immediate response to changes in feeding management. As you can see in the figure, uh, during the challenge on days one and three in the orange box, we observed a clear increase from basal values in c 18196 c's, which is the oleic acid in red. It's the most abundant fatty acid in fat. On the opposite, oleic fell in the refeeding phase when there was an increase in C16 in blue, which can be both preformed and de novo synthesized in the mammary gland, and C14 in black, which is a de novo synthesis fatty acid. Considering the fatty acids according to the number and position of double bones, in the challenge phase, we found an increase in MUFAS in green and cis mufa in red because of the increment in oleic from the body reserves. After that, both of them decrease rapidly in the refeeding phase when the, sati, uh, when the saturated fatty acids increased as a consequence of the rise in the de novo fatty acids and palmitic, which is C16. Finally, we analyzed the evolution of fatty acids according to chain lengths. During the challenge phase, we observed an increment of the mobilization fatty acids, C16 to C24 in red, and during the refeeding phase, uh, we observed the opposite. There was a rise in the de novo fatty acids and C16, reflecting the reversion of fat mobilization. Interestingly, we even observed the rebound effect because in the last sample collected during the refeeding phase, both sums were even different from basal values. 
This implies that beef cows also show, show a high metabolic plasticity when facing nutritional challenges, which could be associated at the individual level to the resilience. So in conclusion, the take home message of our study is that in beef cows, the milk fatty acid profile shows a prompt response to changes in diet and energy balance. And thus they are early indicators of the cow's nutritional status. Thanks very much for your attention.